Ashante, welcome to our channel. Hello, Ashante. I'm back after some time. I uh, hope you guys remember me. I'm sure so they will. I'm sure Shivini was missed over here. So thank you for coming back. I missed you a lot too. So uh, I missed you too. Uh, I missed you too. I wish I could give you a virtual hug. I can't. But like... Um, yeah. Let's jump into the video real quick. As you guys can see from the title, it's going to be Netflix recommendations for the month of January. So uh, this is very interesting. Because I un Usually we don't have so many movies or TV series that just pumps out every month, right? But this January has been kind of good. Yeah. There's been a few movies and TV series. I can't cover all of them because I didn't, I couldn't watch everything within a month. But um, I, I'm going to talk about a few of the movies. One is oh, a few of the TV series, I'm sorry, and one Oscar nominated movie, which is based on a true story. Mm -hmm. So, Shavini, which one would you like me to start with, the movie or the TV series? Uh, I think the movie, but if you don't have Netflix, then how can people watch it? Like, Maybe you can let them know like where they could watch it in case they don't have Netflix. In case they don't have Netflix, I'm not very sure. I think you can find it on, you know, all those sites like F Movies or uh, yeah, Go Movies, uh, movies. Quick Soccer, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, there's a there's I a new like a uh, streaming platform called B Flix, like B and yes. then F L I X. Okay. Yeah, I think sometimes you can find Netflix movies on that as well. Mm, that's nice. I'll check so it like out. Not as well. everyone has, not everyone has Netflix, and not everyone can afford to pay on a monthly basis. Even though Netflix is not that expensive, but like, you have to prioritize yeah. if you have other more serious expenses. Yeah, when we're students, we'll be on a student budget, and yeah, yeah so I understand what you mean. Okay, so you guys can check out the other apps as well. I want to try them too so that, you know, I'll have options if I don't find anything on Netflix because a lot of things I don't... There's this really lovely French TV series, but it's not there in India and I wanted to watch it somewhere so I can check it out as well. And when I go broke too, I think it's going to really help me to cut down <laughs> on Netflix and do something else. Uh, so the movie, yeah. like you said, if I have to talk about it, it's actually really grim because it's based on a true life story of this uh, plane from uh, Ukraine or Uruguay. Oh my gosh. My memory is slacking so now. Hold on. This... Uh, like commercial plane? Yeah, it's a commercial flight called uh, Flight 571 from Uruguay. It crashed in the Andes Uruguay. Mountains. And people actually survived in that cold, harsh conditions for a while, and they made it out alive. And there were only a, like a few survivors. And it was so grim to watch because um, it's an Oscar-nominated movie, so they really made it very realistic to how the true story would have panned out. And the actors did a great job. You can see the physical transformation in them. They like worked on that as well to see how they would have been affected by the cold without going without food. At some point, they had to eat like meat off of dead people in the flight because they just had to do something to survive. You know, they just couldn't. I mean, they, it wasn't graphic. That's one good thing about the movie. It wasn't very graphic, but yeah, uh, it was very. What's beautiful about it, though, was how they hold, held on to hope and faith through it all because it was extreme cold, no food, no water. They had to like eat ice, and they had to survive, and they had to come back. And their only motivation was to go back to their families, which were waiting for them, and they could see the rescue operation. They they finally got to the. Um, the the the, air, the the radio station which was available on the flight because the flight itself was in different parts and they had to travel to like find each of it but when they did they found that the rescue operations couldn't find them rescue operations flew around they could see the flights flying uh -huh. around could talk them and they'd given up this they, but they still kept going without giving hope giving up hope and they finally made it and they got back to their lives after like a year of surviving without anything 
and I'm sure the yeah. family thought they had passed away, like didn't have any hope left. And they yeah, and they all thought it was a miracle that they came back. And you could see the, and then, but this, this is from the point of view of the survivors who made it. So they had like survivor's guilt. They were like, it doesn't feel like a miracle to us, though we were very happy that we could make it. And yeah. because it was, it's all the struggle and the trauma that they are holding, like it was too early for them, you know. But it was, yeah, it was tough to watch, to be honest. I was watching it and I was like, oh my God, we're sitting here cribbing about the littlest things and we're feeling depressed. I'm not trying to compare the suffering because our feeling is our own. But literally, if we are thrown into a situation like that, I think we just want to survive and survive and survive. You know, we, would, we, would hold, we would try our best to hold on to hope. So I can't imagine myself yeah, in that situation. You wouldn't, come back. you wouldn't like, think, you wouldn't take out the time to think stuff much. You'd be like, just, I need food, I need water. However I can get it, I'll take it. I know, right? That's what happens when it comes to like, surviving you don't really care like oh this doesn't taste good or you know you don't care so much about other things you're just like whatever I need in order to keep on breathing I'll just do that yeah I think we talked about it once in one of our shows as well when we were talking about uh like how back in the days people didn't care about mental health much because they were in a survival they like they were if you have to go from you know, if you have to think about very uh, tough situations, like when there's depression in the city and you have to think about finances and economy crashing and things like that, people don't really think and self-reflect or even have time for feeling depressed or anything. And I, at that time, I didn't yeah. get it much, but now I know what you mean because uh, after watching this movie, I'm like, wow, you really, they weren't depressed. They were, they were struggling. But they were holding on to faith and hope so much that they just wanted to survive. Um, but they did show that they were going through PTSD after they were back and they had a lot of survival guilt, survivor's guilt because they had such a bond between each other, like a camaraderie, because they were all trying to survive together. In the night, they have to huddle up together to sleep so that they stay warm. Uh, yeah, to create so warmth. Yeah. Warm. And then imagine yeah, so like, people who during you, this you had a boy dying and then you making through. So they were like, yeah, it was not easy to watch it all, but it was definitely a well-made movie because you can really feel all the emotions and the reality of it. It really got me asking a lot of existential questions. But yeah, so that was the movie. So you guys can watch it on Netflix or like Shivini and I suggested you guys can watch it on other platforms as well. So... I hope yeah, you guys like it too. Yeah, if you don't but... have Netflix. Huh? If you, if you don't have Netflix, then you can try the other platforms we mentioned. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you guys can check it out otherwise as well. So that's the first movie that I wanted to talk about. Shivini, you have a movie to talk about as well, right? Would you like to go after this? Uh, Yeah, sure. So basically, the movie I'm talking about is um, a movie called Fighter. Maybe some of you have already watched it or at least seen the trailer. Uh, I watched it like the day it came out, like online, there's this platform called Your Movies. So like, obviously it was camera quality, not like HD. So it was like a thing, eh, like, like pixelated in a way, <laughs> but it was still clear enough for me to understand. Basically, um, I can't really recall 100% like correctly if it's based on a true story or not so I'm just gonna like leave it to you guys to find that part out because I don't remember uh, but basically it's about how uh, it's just a story of fighter pilots and the um, kind of effort and the sacrifice they put in the main character in this movie is uh, Rithik Roshan's character so his uh, code name like in the movie is Patty like, because in the Air Force, they don't use the full name. They have, like, code names. I think just to make things easier, you know, when you're, like, kind of, like, doing, addressing people, like, you know, they have military, like, Air Force. They have their own codes. So, like, if you use a really long name, I think it's just more complicated to the short name to make it, like, fast and catchy. So it's basically uh, the journey about how uh, there's this war going on 
uh, between Pakistan and India, and then this terrorist from uh, Pakistan like uh dist- like uh, ends up uh, you know like hiring a sleeper cell to uh, you know go and kill like these people that are going to the army base and just like destroy all the soldiers' lives and so many people die that in Indian Air Force retaliates and then out of anger the Pakistan Air Force also like comes up with the strategy and the Indian Air Force like tries to fight back but in the process uh, two of the Air Force pilots get caught and they're like imprisoned in Pakistan and they're like trying to like the Indian Air Force is basically trying to like negotiate and get them out of that cell and get them back to India. But then one of the two uh, people that were in prison dies. And then so it's like a rescue, it becomes a rescue mission in the process. And then it basically like shows like teamwork is important. You, even if you have like strong qualities, you can't just, you know, um, go out and do everything yourself. You need to listen to people and all that. Because it's the Russian's character, like the flaw he had was that he would just think he's the best. So he would just do what he wants in a way. He wouldn't really listen. And that like cost a lot on the team. Like they, first of all, he like apparently lost his um, fiance because he didn't like take the proper decisions um, during a rescue mission. And then two of his friends got um, surrounded by like Pakistan army and they got imprisoned for the wrong reasons. But in the end, their rescue mission was successful and at least one of the friends like came back alive. So it was like, they really, they had really cool scenes where like with, when there's like um, flying the plane, the jet, sorry. They were like really cool scenes when you can see that they're flying the jet and everything and the tricks that they're doing. It was fun. It was really cool to watch. I would say it's just like, it's a nice movie that it's not like really depressing or anything. There's a lot of action. So I'm sure you guys would watch it if you like action. And there's also a bit of like chemistry, like romance between Deepika, who's like the female lead and Deepika Russian. But she seems more of like a side role than a lead, to be honest. Mm-hmm. So I think, yeah, mm-hmm. if you guys like to action, tell you, you know, I get the feel much. that the action scenes and the main plot about the strategies and everything is going to kind of uh, like mellow out the depressing parts of it. So overall, it won't be as grim as what I'm getting from the from the story that you've told me, from the yeah. plot that you've told me. It's not, it's not too depressing. There are some parts that are sad, but it's not something that, it's not a movie that will really make you feel depressed throughout. Mm-hmm. Well, that's really nice. Now you guys have two uh, flights-based movies to check out that are that and have released this like, January. And I think their box office collection is pretty good. Like, it's that's doing good. well. That is really yeah. good. Because of late, a lot of movies aren't doing too well in India, at least, because I don't watch Bollywood movies much, and I'm sure yeah. a lot of people on it and it doesn't, it's very rare, like you say, it becomes a box office success. At least from my opinion, I could be completely wrong here. I don't want to be bashed, but I, from the way I see it, a lot of movies are not making it very big. So it's good. It's good that not very big in the sense like I think people like, don't think the story good and stuff like that. So. I think it's it's uh, slowly getting back. Like, okay, at, um, there was a time where like a lot of people didn't want to watch the movies because of the whole um, boycott uh, Bollywood because of nepotism because of the whole thing that happened with the actor Sushant oh. Singh Rajput yeah. so, like a lot of people are like boycott Bollywood, it's full of nepotism mm-hmm. uh, Bollywood is the reason he killed himself and all that people are like, people were saying that so I think that's one of the reasons why there was a time, like during COVID times it was a joke. Uh, and yeah, like during that time Bollywood wasn't doing good, obviously because of COVID, but at the same time, like even the um, movies that were released online, they weren't doing that great, I think, because of the whole thing with Susan, Sushant Singh Rajput like committing suicide. Uh, uh, that could but be I think the reason slowly, 
I think slowly people are starting to move on from that. And they're like mm-hmm. watching movies again. Because like Shari Khan's two movies, I think actually maybe all three of them that were released last year did really well. Especially mm-hmm. the first two that he released last year did really well. That's good. Good, good that things are yeah. picking back up. And it could have also been because of the pandemic, you know, the economy went down a lot and the entertainment industry also suffered because people aren't going to watch, going to the theaters to watch movies anymore. And that could have been a little. All right, let's quickly move on to the next three TV series that I have for you guys. One is called Fool Me Once. Uh, I'm not sure if you've heard of it. Have you come across Fool Me Once, Shalini? No, but I've heard the phrase of fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's based on that. So fool me once is a very ah. uh, nice murder mystery. It's very fast paced. And, you know, there are plot holes, I must say. But by the time you realize there's a plot hole, the movie would have gone very fast. I mean, the TV series goes really fast that you won't, you, you just really be hooked to it. Uh, I binge watched it and I finished it, the entire series. Is it similar? According to me. But after to... I finished watching it, I realized certain plot holes. Like, you know, there's this detective who goes, uh, for, he's a very honest detective who doesn't get bribed. And he goes uh, watching the, I mean, watching the movie, no, I'm sorry, what am I saying? I was watching the movie. But the detective goes, like, solving the crime. But there are, there's like family members. It's a family of many siblings and this really extremely super rich mom. And the son, get, son gets shot in the very first scene, the opening is in the Shana sh- so shot. So that's the murder mystery about. And then her, the sister in law is dead as well. But he doesn't go around interviewing all the siblings. He doesn't go around. That is not shown. So it's kind of. Those are like the plot holes in the movie. You end up sitting back wondering why he didn't do that. And there were some other plot holes as well. Like, I'm, I wasn't satisfied with the ending because it was so fast-paced and it was there was so much adrenaline and rush for me. But towards the end of the movie, I was like, wait, that's it? I was expecting a much stronger ending to this. So that was my take on it. But it was definitely worth watching once. I watched it twice, but it's definitely worth watching, worth watching once. It's really good, very fast-paced, and uh, it'll keep you guessing yeah. from the beginning to the end. And um, that that's really good. That's a good flavor for a, a good murder mystery movie. I mean, TV series. I'd say it's a limited series on Netflix, so it's just one season. So if you're someone who gets bored by watching things that have many seasons, this is something for you. It'll be lovely. So that is for me once. Second one is Griselda. Griselda. Is uh, starring Sofia Wait, Vergara. The, the show you mentioned, this uh, the show you mentioned, they're already done completely filming. So there's not going to be a season two. There's not going to be what? I'm so sorry. There's not going to be a season two. No, there's no season two because it's a limited series. Oh, wow. Is it like, is it like uh, only murderers in the building? No, I liked Only Murders in the Building more compared to this because that had so much more intrigue and I think it it was funny as well. This is not funny. It's very oh, yeah. serious. There's no funny elements in it, but it's still very nice. It's like the plot is attacked from different angles by different protagonists rather than focusing on just one person to solve the case. And I think that's very interesting because you see the case unfold from so many different angles. And that makes it very interesting and very wholesome to watch. But it's it's still very serious and fast paced. It's not it, it doesn't have as much intrigue as murder mysteries, murders in the building. What was that called? Murders in the building, right? It doesn't have as much intrigue as that, but it's still very interesting to watch. Oh, so I'd say that you go for it. Only murders in the building. Only murders in the building. Yeah, I love that. That was really good. Hmm. Okay. Okay, the next one is uh, Griselda. Griselda stars Sofia Vergara as in the main role, but it stars her in a way you wouldn't expect to see her play. She completely transforms into a character. It's also based on a true life story. So she completely transforms into the character, transforms into the character to a point where you don't see you don't see Sofia Vergara in it. 
even physically she transforms a lot mm. and you don't see uh gloria pritchett coming through because that's something that i was like oh is it going to be funny are you going to see her you know making it a comedic role like comic co humor in it but it was not that way it was very it was very nuanced and it's set in 1970s 1980s so you have this vintage vibe in the entire screenplay which is very nice to watch but compared to the next tv series that i'm going to talk about i didn't like this very much it, it i kind of didn't watch it completely i watched a few episodes and i kind of lost interest somehow it didn't keep me hooked so that's my take on it I, but i think a lot of people have it has good reviews a lot of people seem to like it so maybe you guys would like it if you try but and it's like about a drug lord mafia uh and it's about back in the days in the 70s and 80s when women are oppressed so seeing a woman lead role or you know in a world like that in a you know you know career field like that and her coming up is like something interesting to watch her struggles and how she overcomes it and how she becomes a big drug lord person and it's very interesting because nobody expects a woman to rise up in that career and everybody kind oh, of tries yeah. to oppress so that is kind of interesting to see like a single mom struggling to make through and coming up in a career like this which is not ideal for women back in the days so that is something interesting the next one is uh, brother son so this is uh this immigrant family immigrant asian family in the us who have like this uh big mafia gangster history that catches up to them and they're trying to solve the problem because there's somebody going after them and they're trying to solve that and survive basically but it's really interesting very fast paced and i i like it i kind of like the the kind of different flavors of action and everything that they're bringing into it is very nice it's like watching a nice jackie chan movie but like a very very beautiful tv series that shows like a lot of different jackie emotions chan. drama like family and family values and everything so it's really nice to watch i liked it, it was very clean and very good as well that was not that clean it was very explicit but this was very clean so i liked it because i watch it with family as a family so when it's very explicit content it's very un- so yeah those are the tv series and movie suggestions we have for you guys today hope you guys liked it and hope you guys come back for the next video and show some likes and comments on the video yeah. as well we'd love to interact with you and thank you for all the love that you guys have shown on the previous videos and uh, yeah. you can let us know like which shows you like the most out of the ones we suggested and like which movie you prefer out of the two that we mentioned yes please you could do that you could also let us know if you guys like any of the movies that have come out this january or tv series that has come out this january yeah. on netflix on other platforms like disney plus amazon prime and you know hulu hulu, hulu right that's yeah 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 you guys can let us know as well we'll check it out and give us your, give you guys our review i am stuttering a lot today anyway it was really <laughs> lovely Uh, doing this with you again Shavini I miss you a lot and it's really lovely seeing you guys again today after after the last video uh hope you guys loved the last video as well let us know what you think and stay safe stay warm and take care stay Bye. healthy stay Bye. healthy